and uh, hello everyone uh, my name is Keisha and I'm working with B in the future as uh, senior consultant and uh, I have 13 plus years of IT experience and uh, I have the expertise in IBM MQ IIB uh, like their development and administration and also I have the expertise in big data development in its uh, ecosystem so Today, I will uh, talk to you uh, about the introduction of big data in a logical way. Uh, let me see if I am able to share my screen. Just confirm, like if you guys are able to see my screen. Is it visible I, to you? I confirm. Yes, okay. I confirm. All yes. right. All right, so before I run through this slide, let me talk to you. Uh, as I said, like that, the introduction of big data uh, in a logical way. So, like, I will, before I go through this uh, whole set of PPT, I will uh, talk a bit about the big data in a layman term, or I will try to explain. Uh, so, let me go to the Go to the paint and let me draw let me give a problem statement uh, so let's see like uh, earlier like when we uh, like before 2003 there was like uh, 2003 and 4 like when google experienced this before that there was no concept of big data because we had a very limited internet and all and uh, the internet was a very small thing so let us consider an example of uh, uh, of a problem statement like suppose we have a uh, we have a uh, file and it is of 20 MB and it has some words and uh, the task given to us is like write a program to count the word in a given given file size like let's say it's 20 MB, 30 MB, whatever it is like a very small file and uh, you will uh, and and you say that like okay uh, it's, it's a very simple job like a, a job can be a program can be written in C, C++, Java, Python and that program could very much give us this result like this 20 mb file like how many words are there it can count and it can give us the result so why it is possible because we are able to store this 20 mb of file uh, in one single box or single machine or single node uh, so now let us imagine a situation like when we have 4 tb of uh file like instead of 20 mb of file now we have 4 tb of file and uh, we have to count the number of words to drive some analytics like we have some big file or some 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 uh, some some input we got and like we have to we have to run some analytics uh, in order to see like that how many searches are like you know uh, uh, are are for like which which items or something so like if some kind of situation is there uh, how we are going to deal with like if we don't have the big data then just imagine a scenario like what what we are going to face so if it is a 4 tv probably my laptop is just having uh, like one tv and most of the laptops like what we have is like it will be either 500 gb or or one uh, one tv so like one tv is uh, so 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 like uh, so one tb is like 1024 gb and like 1 gb is 1024 mb so just think how big this size uh, file is but like you can still come and say okay well, there is no big deal we can still like uh, have a laptop which has a, a 4 tb of hard disk we can restore in the same laptop and then we can we can drive uh, the analytics by running uh, whatever the program we have written but okay that's also fine but like i i'll say that what if like we have this uh, file is now 10 10 gb sorry 10 tb so there's just there's a limitations like we cannot scale up one system uh beyond the beyond the limit like you cannot increase its ram you cannot increase it storage so that's that's when the big data come into picture so now now uh, let us let us see like we have this 4 tb of uh 4 tb of this file now what if like we approach this problem like that if if we divide it in four part like p1 p2 p3 and p4 
and now we have four laptops so like consider my laptop so now i have one gb consider we have sorry uh, consider we have a consider we have a file uh, so for uh, just a minute to one sec God. All right, uh, so uh, sorry, there was a call and uh, my phone was not muted. Uh, okay, so now like we have divided this in four parts like P1, P2, P3 and P4, all of one TV size and now we have like node one, node two, node three, and node four. Like four node, node is near nothing but the uh, like one, uh, like you can consider like one one laptop. Like in my case, it is a one system. So now we can give one, uh, like we, we can we can give one uh, one one part to each of the each of the computer to process it like so p1 will come here to node node 1 p2 will come to p2 uh, node 2 p3 will come to node 3 and p4 will come to node 4 so now like okay the storage part is done like we had four five four tb of uh, file and we have this four uh, uh, node and we have just like given one one file uh, part of the file to process so the storage storage is done now but what is our problem statement? We have to count the number of the file, right? Uh, number of the uh, uh, words in each file. So we have this, this since this is a standalone system. So each system has three things, right? Like it will have the RAM. It will have the storage, like what is the hard disk. And it has the CPU for processing or to compute. So as in our case, like it is like one computer, like each individual machine. So like now, we have p1 p2 p3 p4 and now like this this compute will uh, this cpu will process this like this uh, uh, e on on each file this will run and like it will give us some report like that okay it is uh, like say it is like it it gives like 10 20 30 40 like i'm just giving any number like it is giving some number to us but like that will not be the final result here right so so in order to achieve the final result, we have to have one more. Uh, so this is this this will all do the like aggregation of the number on like locally, like on one file of, or part of the file. But finally, like if we want to do the uh, finally, if we want to do the uh, aggregation of that, so we have we have to have like you know from from here like let's see if i have got like 10 and then 20 i'm just taking any hypothetical number it could be in real time it could be more and like whatever so now we have to send this send this number to 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 the another another box or another node node means like i'm talking about the computer and this box will do the uh uh, the final aggregation so this final aggregation here it will it will add all the things so suppose 10 20 13 40 so so like if you add so it will be 10 20 30 and then like it will be 100 uh suppose say it it, it, it just gives you the 100 number here so this this number so basically like if you I will just now include some of the technical term. So this one, like when when this data moves from here to here, in big data term, it is called shuffling, like from here moving to here. And since this data, uh, like uh, we we have run on local system, like this file uh, has come here. So this this file on each node. Uh, is the part of this file so this this whole thing the storage 
this is storage like we we move like literally we chop down and then we brought it here so this file is called hdfs i will talk with more on the uh, on the uh, slides also but like i am just telling you that so hdfs stand for hadoop distributed file system so basically like you are distributing a very big thing into the multiple servers or computer so this distributed uh, storage of file is called nothing but the hdfs now we are running the cpu locally here so cpu if you see so cpu is to compute like locally we computed this file and we got this number 10 ideally it will be very big i for the sake of calculating i just took 10 so this cpu locally is going to run the program to count so in actual scenario when we have a 20 mb file size and we are running that program so that local program used to give us this result but like here in our big data system we are going to run the application and that application is called uh, map so that map will run locally like map one map map application will run and it will give us some inter intermediate result so this map so like why uh, so that this, this is what like it is running on each each server and now like we are we are sending the report to the aggregator so that aggregator is uh, so like we are shuffling this data and this is this 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 is called reducer here so reducer is basically it is giving is the giving us the final final result so so the whole whole big data system revolves around this this is the fundamental so basically like we have to deal with a very big chunk of uh, file or data and we have to we have to try to achieve some analytics by by uh, by chopping down or by by uh, distributing by by dividing it into a small a smaller portion of data and then run the map job because in 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 real time like the the program the real program which which runs on only one system it is not going to run that paradigm will fail because like we have to have one system that 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 should work on the distributed way the application the framework should should work on a distributed way in order to have us the uh, give us the final final result so if i so if if i go to this slide now and uh, these are the agenda i will uh, i will cover today probably uh, we will just uh, quickly go now so uh so 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 like you must have got some idea about the big data now so big data is a term that describe the large value of data and everyone gives like if you ask like anyone like what is big data they will tell you like that okay big data is like something which my system cannot store or like uh, some people will say that like uh, like you know that if uh, if they're like entire like a host of server is not able to To, to manage so like so there is like many like people has like their own understanding and they will talk about but uh, but what uh, actually uh, how do we classify the big data actually is like uh, uh, there is like number of b like people talk about 7b 11b 10b so but uh, ib i am in the beginning uh, has given this definition that at least we can classify data uh as a big data like if it has at least 3v so one is like volume the second one is veracity the third is velocity so 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 and we will talk one more v but uh, there are many people that talks about like there are that there has to be 7v 11v but like from this significance like that uh, point of view if i uh, i what i could see is like that uh, 4v if we discuss that would be more than enough to understand like you know uh, to 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 classify data as big data so so if we talk about the volume so volume must be uh, uh, like big enough like that that one system is not able to handle it uh so like if you if you if you see let me now uh, 
okay increase the front i hope it is clear uh, clearly visible so so just like you see like nowadays like just if you talk about the volume of data like the the way we are generating so it's like 2.5 quintillion of data like we are generating every day on the internet uh because of the popularity of iot and all and if we need to drive the insight from this data uh, just just think of that like how how big or robust system we want in order to drive uh, the the amount of data we have so, so such kind of data like uh, it is it is getting generated each day over the internet then we have like variety of different form of, of data so like we have a structured data so like any any database system like we call sql oracle and all where we get the structured data like data in the tabular form so those data like we we get in the so a, any transactional system uh, uh, generally uh, are a structured data like when we uh, when the transaction happens and it it gets updated so basically everything is recorded in database then we have like another set of data that is called semi structured data like csv xml json so it has it has the schema but like it is not like not necessarily in the uh, tabular form uh, so so like th that is the example of uh, uh, the semi structured data and then like we have now also a number of data like we 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 are getting uh, and classified as on a structured data like audio video image log file so like, like suppose we have a web server and then you just see like that you know if you see their logs so it will be in very structured like it doesn't have any schema it will be like having all the different sort of things and if you are trying to uh to, to analyze that log through big data and then like you 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 and like or, or like there could, could be multiple things and if you are trying to drive some insight through big data then you have to deal with this such unstructured data also so so like these are the three main that ibm gave but like uh like then we we got the uh and the the, the third one is the velocity so velocity is the uh the speed at which the data is being generated so like uh, if you see like this is the per day uh per day tweets uh, on the twitter then like the video being uploaded on the youtube then like a search that is made on on google then photo that is being uploaded on the uh, facebook so see the the volume of data that is being you know uploaded and if you were trying to to trying to drive some insight so like this kind of data like we 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 have and that we that we have to deal with which one system will not be able to to manage and that's when the big data comes into the to picture so the fourth view of the big data like which is another uh, important so so we talked about the volume velocity and variety now the fourth one is uh, veracity so veracity is the uncertainty of data so like we basically are trying to deal every sort of data in uh, when 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 com comes to the uh, the problem comes to the big data developer when when it is given to us we we almost uh, like deal with e everything so like apart from these things now we have like veracity of data like uh, so basically quite a few times we we do get the poor quality of data or unclean data it 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 will not have any format and if if you have to to, to run some analytics or you're trying to drive something so you have to deal with and there are various methods to do uh, which probably if later in uh, we can discuss in later talks like if 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 that comes basically today i will just stick to the introduction part of it so the fourth b is veracity where like we talk about the uh, poor quality on unclean data and how how uh, and this will also uh, this also comes under the big data stack and we very much deal with this such kind of data as well so now we we talk about the uh, the fourth four important view of the uh, big data that cl classify any data as big data then why why big data so the big data is like as i told you like some introduction i have given that like if we have a monolith system like just one 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 server one cpu and we want to process the huge amount of data so we don't have the sufficient storage only the storage itself is a very big problem then processing will also come into picture because we cannot uh, go beyond a certain limit of ram or 
uh, or like the CPU will also be the, will create a bottleneck. Like we cannot vertically scale a a, a system, and that's why uh, this huge amount of data will not be uh, we will not be able to process in a traditional way. Like traditional way means like I'm talking about one monolith system. So storage is a big problem, right? Uh, because we have a limit. So we cannot go beyond a certain, certain, uh, a certain uh, storage. Like we cannot go and increase a single system, a single laptop beyond a certain, uh, a certain storage capacity. So, so, so storage is again a, a big problem. So, which is why we need big data. So, our so like uh, I, I, I explained like that uh, you, uh, you get to know like that that why our traditional system is like unable to uh, not capable to store the massive amount of data what we are receiving nowadays in order to uh, solve the real time problem. So so we certainly need a big data system uh, to handle those things. So big data helps us to store huge amount of data whereas the tra traditional system will not be fit to store huge amount of data and you know like that because of the limitations at the storage side and also ram and cpu cannot be increased beyond a limit so so what all three things we need uh, in a in a big data system what what th there are three component that that creates a backbone or that creates any 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 good uh, big data system. So one is like the store. So store itself is a uh, uh, is a very uh, most uh, most important thing. Like because we have to deal with very high volume of data, and we we need to have this storage like a store massive amount of data. So we need a storage system that 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 should help us to store that data so process huge amount of data in a efficient and timely manner traditional system will not be able to suffice this then process so like if we are uh, storing the file in a uh, in a distributed uh, system so we also need to process the the uh, file in a distributed way like that like uh, as i explained you uh, that like it has to be like the analytics will be uh, we will try to run locally this map job will run locally and it will try to give us some intermediate result then we will send it to the the final uh, final aggregator which is the reducer so so the process should also be uh, in a timely manner like uh, so like if it is a very big and we were trying to one uh, a process on only one server we will not be able to achieve in a timely fashion so it has to be parallel processing like each node has to parallelly process the data then uh, the third system is it should be scalable so like if suppose uh, today uh, we have been given that okay uh, uh, the, can you design a system of 500 tb of data and uh, or 50 TB of data and like suppose IT is like very uh, dynamic environment. So tomorrow uh, the requirement comes that okay now we have to handle 500 TB of data. So we cannot say that no earlier you have just told us that okay design a system that will only process 50 TB of data. Now they are asking us to uh, do it for 500 TB of data. So we must design a system a big data pipeline that should be able to scale and we can we can process that uh, uh, or we can scale it uh, very easily like just by increasing the uh, the uh, number of nodes or like nodes when i'm talking about the number of uh, server uh, by adding the compute more compute more storage we should be able to scale this system so these are the three major uh, component of a big data system or uh, this is the three things like you know that that uh, that that play a major role like when we, we design a big data system like one is the storage one is process and one is like we, we should be able to scale it so we can now build it two way uh, there is a two way to build any system like one is monolith and one is distributed you like we all have uh, already uh, seen it so monolithic is like just like one system and distributed is like when we have the 
host of the uh, nodes so like monolithic just one system and we saw that there is a limitation we cannot go beyond a certain limit no matter how much uh, uh, we, we we try to uh, uh, scale it vertically so there is a limitation and beyond a point it will not not go further but like however in distributed like you can see like here we have a six node uh, uh, server like we have six uh, uh, six machine or six node and uh, like so it is like just the combination of many smaller system when it comes together it 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 is called a cluster so so then uh, and uh, here we can we can scale like if we need like more compute we can bring like we can add more more system to it and it it will be uh, it can easily be scalable so so monolithic or distributed so certainly there is like monolithic will not be able to handle the the requirement here right because a single powerful server had to add resources after a certain limit it will not work as we explained so when we say uh, talk about resources so resources is nothing but it's like ram hard disk and cpu like uh, that 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 gives us the compute power hard disk gives us the storage and memory is like ram so now uh, the challenge is with the monolith is like as we dis uh, discuss like that we have like even we uh, double the resource here but we will not get the uh, double performance 2x like if we add 2x resource the performance will not be uh, in the same proportion uh, because of the limitations uh, of the monolith uh, system but however like if we have distributed we can just another uh, we can add one more uh, uh, like uh, host of cluster like uh, just like double and then we will get the double double speed and uh, like just by adding 2x of resource we can get the 2x of speed so which is why uh, we, we 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 have to uh, go to the distributed way in order to solve the big data problems so vertical scaling is not really a true scaling we understood now and like distributed architecture here like by adding the number of uh, server we will get that uh, uh, the, the true scaling like that we can we can keep increasing this way so monolithic and distributed now you know like that why we will go for the distributed computing so that is why any big data system are based on the distributed architecture so you understand it now so so now so as we understand this distributed so uh, architecture uh, thoroughly so now let us talk about the hadoop so what is what is hadoop so hadoop is nothing but a, it's a framework to solve the big data problem so so as you know like that when we we have to like uh, distribute the big file uh, uh, over the host of the network server and we have to run the map job to 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 uh, achieve some result uh, so uh, like so so this this framework was developed the hadoop is the framework that that was initially introduced to solve such such kind of problem so basically i will talk about the hadoop evolution and then uh, uh, then you will understand it more how hadoop came into picture so in uh, 2000 three google released a paper to describe how to store large data set what happened actually in 2003 google used to run their server on the monolith server like one one part one server they used to host the, the their application on which we were all the web uh, or google search they they used to to receive all that all that query but in 2003 they realized that that vertical server like one monolith server has its limit it cannot go beyond a certain certain level and that's when uh, google had just published one white paper uh, you can still go and find gfs like if you see you will find that paper where, when they conceptually explained that what what a gfs will be like google file system they name it google file system and then they explain like that if any any uh, like if if we have like a when when the monolith system will not be able to uh, serve our purpose how a distributed file system that they call google file system 
would be able to suffice that purpose when a host of server will be able to uh, handle the load so so in 2003 they published this paper just on the concept side and it was there available uh, across uh, across the universities and for everyone access uh, just to see and come up with a solution so this paper was called gfs google file system and then uh, so google file system is like if you talk about the gfs so gfs if uh, if you see it is just take talking about the storage problem like when we have 4 tb of size and that one system is not able to uh, store the full four file or uh, the whole file then we have to uh, divide the file into part and that each part was given to one one server so basically this whole thing was called hdfs so that is like that is gfs like the hadoop talked about in in gfs hadoop talked about the storage part only uh, but now like if you have the the file is distributed among the server but that file like what is my problem problem is like we have to achieve a final result so like here like on each server there has to be some compute also so for the compute part then google realized that okay that gfs takes care of the storage but what about the compute so the for the compute in 2004 again google released one another paper and they called it uh, to, to process the large data, data set they said like that if we have the data set distributed on the server so how to process this one so in in 2004 they they come up with another uh, another uh, paper and they call it map reduce so this paper was called map reduce that like map job and reduce job so I, I I explained you. So here, like on each server, that program run and it gave us the local result. Like in this file, we have 10 word. This file, we got 20. So whatever, like here. And then, so this, these, these all, all the server, like we run one map job. And then, but this is not the final result. We wanted like how many words are there. So here we are just getting the intermediate result. And then we finally send it to the, uh, a reducer or final aggregator and here they add and give us a hundred count so this is the reducer and this is the map so so they give us this paper the concept they have given map reduce concept all right so so this this paper was published in the 2004 to google and it was there on the conceptual side that google gave us and then what happened uh, in 2006 uh, yahoo took these two paper and implemented implemented it uh, like uh, uh, both were on the concept phase so yahoo took both and they have implemented both the concept so the hdf gfs the implementation of gfs uh, the yahoo renamed it to hdfs hadoop distributed file system and the map reduce they did not change the name like it was map map job and reduce job so they just keep the map and reduce so it remain unchanged all right so now having said that now in the hadoop 1.0 when when this 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 uh, this version was re re released so it had only two two things hdfs for the distributed storage and map reduce for the distributed processing right like basically that that is what like our problem was also like if the, the file was very big so we distributed the file to the host of server and then we uh, run the map and reduce to this uh, to process the distributed file so distributed for the distributed processing uh, then in 2009 what uh, uh, yahoo did they have uh, like uh, made it at open source in 2004 they have given it to the apache software foundation and made it open source open source is not not don't get confused with the it as a freeware freeware is like that only the software is without li uh, license like you don't need to pay anything but open source is like where you can see the source code 
you can uh, you can contribute to it like you, if there is any problem you, if there is any bug you can go and if you have the knowledge you can write the uh, solution to it you can you can write the code and you can give it to the uh, apache and they will uh, view it and if it it really uh, solves the problem they will accept it so here like everyone like in this uh, open source now like everyone could use this uh, uh, open source uh, hadoop uh, and also contribute to it so in 2013 then apache released another uh, version which is hadoop 2.0 to provide the major performance enhancement so what happened like as and when like it started evolving so so if you see the evolution like in 2003 uh, the google published the paper gfs 2004 they they uh, introduced the paper on MapReduce. Then Yahoo took it on 2006. They implemented it. 2009, then Hadoop uh, came into under the Apache Foundation. And in 2013, this was the, uh, uh, in, uh, they released it, Hadoop 2.0. So what problem happened here in Hadoop 1 and 2? So like this MapReduce started becoming very bulkier. Like, uh like uh, uh, it not only had to like process the file it also has to take the uh, uh manage the resource because like suppose if we have a very big cluster like where there is 1000 servers are there so if this map reduce has to manage the resources of the entire 1000 uh server and uh and and if the the, the the size is all uh, like very big then there was a bottleneck coming in like the map reduce uh, was degrading to a very large extent so in hadoop 2.1 2, 2, 2, uh, 2 what they did they have taken a portion of job like map reduce what they did they said like that okay you just take care of the map and reduce like the processing part the the distributed processing part whereas we will take care of the resource management and they also uh, added uh, so like they have taken like some like say uh, map reduce used to do 100 things so they gave it like you take care of 60 things but like 40 things will be taken care of by something else so resource management was one of the very big thing uh, which they have given it to yarn we'll talk about yarn in coming slide and they also added few more features to yarn and then in hadoop 2 basically the the the, the architecture became hdfs map reduce and yarn so what is in yarn so yarn is uh, like the the full form is yet another resource negotiator so basically it is mainly responsible for the resource management like that uh, uh like that we have the distributed server so uh, and to manage like like suppose you consider yarn as your computer window like so like if if i'm i'm using my laptop so my operating system windows 11 which is installed on it that takes care of its ram storage and everything like if i'm saving anything so like it, it takes care but when we have the like uh, 1000 server in a cluster and a big data is uh, uh, application is hosted on it so we must know like that you know which system is having how much resource and uh, uh, their compute and all those things so so this yarn is like you can consider it it is a window but it is taking care of the distributed resource like the the, the all the, all all the servers that is there in the big data cluster all right so basically now my produce is not taking care of the resource management it is the yarn so it is the yarn which is taking care of the resource management map reduce is just uh, uh, like doing the uh, processing the distributed processing work and sdfs is like in both the case it is there it is just taking care of the distributed storage so now so what how it evolved now like if you talk about a uh, uh, like hadoop core component now so now hadoop 2 it has it has got three component hdfs for the distributed storage map reduce for the distributed processing and yarn for the resource management so uh, let us take a pause and uh, just uh, see so this is what a big data core components looks like so basically we had the storage problem then we have the uh, distributing uh, distributed processing problem and then we we also face the 
challenge of the resource management when the number of server increased significantly then map reduce was not able to manage and that's how the yarn get into the picture so this is the very typical uh, component core component of the hadoop all right so so far so good so let's uh, let's proceed i think what is the time now uh we have another uh, few minutes i think uh, I, i will take another 10 minutes to run through the slide and after that we'll try to take down the question if i'm not able to finish probably there will be another uh, another uh, uh, session will be hosted and we will probably continue from there all right so now let's talk about the hadoop uh, ecosystem so basically now uh, any big data system it revolves like uh, this had htfs map reduce and yarn so like anything you see on top of it like that hbase pig hive scoop uji so these all things are just the added uh, tools and technology to 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 handle this big data thing so so this is how a big data system looks like now this is the hadoop core you know very much now know like that what is yarn what is map reduce and what is sdfs why it is needed so this is the hadoop core and now like apache spark scoop hbase hive uji pig is like no not now now it is like now it is like not not really important very less in uh, organization use it so these tools and technology is just the uh, just just uh, uh you you can can consider it as a as a uh, cherry on the cake like that this just help us to to achieve the result so let us not talk about uh, there are few more but i just put few of them here there are like a, a number of other components so let us consider about hive so hive is uh, uh, um, like it is a uh, uh i would say like uh, okay uh, so like if you uh, if you suppose you don't know java map reduce like uh, just to let you know so map reduce uh, is like basically uh, is like every job is like written in java like in map reduce uh, is is itself written in a java so it understand java only so now and it is like really in traditional programming like it is like you have to really like a bulky code 200 line 300 line of code to to achieve something so java becomes really really bulky but like suppose if you don't know java but now you know sql so this uh, that the so so like a lot of people they they knew sql they are like very robust with sql but like they didn't know much uh, uh, or were not comfortable with java so so what uh, this tool hive does is like that you can very much write the sql code and uh, this sql code underneath it will be translated to the java job only like the java java code only it will be given so like suppose you have to write 200 lines of java code which you can write one line of sql code here and you can give it to the hive and then hive internally will convert that one line of sql code to 200 lines of java code and then that goes to the map reduce and then map reduce will process and you know will give us the desired result so so these all tools and technology makes our job very easier so here the hive is not using the like the, the though the command is like sql like but they call it hql hive query language but like if you know sql means you will be very much able to write the uh, uh, the, the code here and then that will internally get uh, they get get converted to the map reduce job and uh, it will process so it will it will it will be become very easy uh, for you to write a uh, write a map reduce job uh, then let's talk about scoop a scoop is like i will analyze like a, like when you go to the ice cream counter and you ask them please give me two scoop of ice cream so this this scoop is nothing but it's the same thing so as we have the hdfs which is the distributed file system but uh, now we have the traditional database also so in order to like if you want to take the data uh, from the traditional database to the hdfs you need a scope to import the data 
or like you want to send the data from HDFS to the traditional database, then you have to use the scoop to send the data from your uh, HDFS to the uh, 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 traditional database like SQL, Oracle or whatever. Then HBase is nothing but it is the NoSQL database like MongoDB and all. So this is like uh, it, it, it gives you the flexibility to, to save the process data and all. So OG, so let's uh, see like there is a distributed. I don't have much time to explain. Uh, as I told you that pig is like, you know, pig uh, help us to do like one is to clean the data and then other thing is like to uh, uh, convert the data into the structured format. Uh, but like uh, nowadays it has been taken care by the uh, Spark. So the very uh, now budge of the day is like Spark. Spark is like very much uh, in demand right now. And why it is we will talk in the coming coming slide. But like uh, it, it, is, it, is the, it is becoming the processing engine now. Like Spark is, is, is the budge uh, at present in the market. So let's uh, go to the Spark. So Spark is a distributed general purpose in memory compute engine. So what happens like uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 in like map, map reduce what happens like if we have the distributed file and like if it is like uh, uh, let's take about this example only. So like if it is a distributed file system and if we want to run something so like if you see that there will be one read and write operation like you know on each each server there will be read and write operation uh, if we want to run on 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 any job so like if we if the file system is distributed on like five server then there will be two io operation like one is like map map reduce job will run so there will be one read and write operation so there will be like 10 io operation but but in case of the spark job what it does it reads the data once and it it takes that chunk of data into the memory so what happens it reduces the like IO operation, like input and output operation, it reduces because it will read and keep the data in memory. So that way, it 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 gives us like almost 10 to 100 times faster computation compared to MapReduce. All right, and beside, um, it is also written in. It is also written in Scala. Uh, Okay, it is in, in memory compute. Uh, okay, before I'm I'm going to that. So let's let's now just talk about like the uh, how a uh, a typical uh, like a, a just just to uh, a recap. So HDFS is just the storage in it in in a Hadoop cluster. MapReduce is the compute engine, and Yarn is the resource manager, right? As we explained earlier. But uh, but now like uh, since spark is quite fast and it is like 10 to 100 times faster than map reduce what uh, the cr current industry trend is shifting towards is like hdfs is okay it is giving us the distributed um, uh, storage but map reduce is now being replaced by the spark because is map, re map reduce or spark is like just the compute right we are trying to uh, do the distributed computing so since spark is very fast so it is map reduces re getting replaced by the spark and yarn is like again the resource manager so so it is a plug and play compute engine like uh, so people get confused like that okay they, they are asking that okay hadoop is dying down so hadoop is not dying down like uh, if you compare and people say that spark is taking over hadoop so spark is not take uh, this comparison is wrong because spark is just a compute engine and map reduce is uh, just a distributed uh, processing so spark is also a distributed processing so we if we have to compare we can compare map reduce with the spark we can't compare spark with hadoop all right so it is just a plug, uh, plug and play engine and uh, it is written uh, and uh, and with this uh, so look uh, it can use any uh, like uh, Spark can uh, is, is okay with, to process the file system which is kept in your uh, local uh, local computer or if it is kept in the HDFS or if it is kept on the Amazon S3 uh, file system and then 
you can plug and play the resource manager so like yarn is one of the uh, resource manager like that we have in market mesos and kubernetes also that does the very exact job what yarn does all right so now how a spark cluster looks like so earlier for the compute we had map reduce but now we have spark and now for the storage we had uh, uh, hdfs in the hadoop but now here like we can use local hdfs amazon s3 or whatever the file system and then the resource management also you can use any like in hadoop you have yard but like in 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 spark cluster you can use mesos or kubernetes or yarn any of the resource manager so this is like you know the current industry trend because it is very fast and it it gives you the throughput all right uh, so why why spark so uh, one thing is like uh, spark is written in scala and scala and it it support basically four language so in map reduce you have to only write the code in java because it only support java or otherwise you have to use the tool uh, like uh, hive or other in order and th that tool helps to convert uh, the program you have written the hql that will get converted to the java but in here uh, spark gives you the flexibility to write the code in four language one is scala one is java one is python and one is r so scala is like very uh, fast because spark is written in scala itself so if you uh, uh, like write the code in scala so that becomes very fast because the spark framework itself is written in scala so there is like no lag it will be very fast like if you write a python then it will internally create one one uh, process like that is the python uh, uh, engine uh, or jvm and then it it gives like bit delay java will be again like very bulky and uh, r is like if you are writing more like you know machine learning and all then r is like very very much uh, helpful if we are into uh, trying to do something uh, from the data science uh, uh, side uh, but uh, like from the big data perspective i mostly write the code in scala and python is also like very much similar like just by making 5 to 7% change in the code you can convert any scala uh, application to the python probably later uh, in dev talks i will try to show you also some real time application we can code and we can we can see like how how that goes all right so now let us uh, consider a scenario like where we have this uh, big data system uh, so so basically i talked about storage processing and scalability we talked about the mono monolithic system where vertical scaling and like we can only do one query and like that is also limited if we have the big size we cannot run so these are the limitation whereas in distributed we can scale it to any level we can we can have this uh, queries like we, we can scale it to any 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 dimension any 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 size so that's so that was the uh, so that was the uh, problem that that is how we uh, solve through the distributed and big data uh, hadoop uh, framework now suppose there is a there is a problem like you know now let us consider a very a basic uh, problem what uh, what uh, this uh, commercial uh, website like uh, e-commerce uh, and other other people started facing like uh, if they don't include this uh, art uh, 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 big data then what challenge they face so like if it is a e-commerce website now people will do the purchase or transaction or interaction or like they are trying to add cart and something so like if if those purchase are there and like we have the table in the database like product order customer and there will be many more right now if we want to run a complex query like where we have to you know drive the insight from multiple table then then and uh, that that com uh, complex uh, complex uh, uh, query will try to you know run onto the multiple multiple uh, table and then what it will it will create additional overhead where it is a transactional system so you cannot do not want to burden and if this size this table is really big then it will not give you <coughs> also the uh, output in a timely manner so so if the query uh, targets various table to get the final result then the process would be very time and cost effective 
sometime it is like if you run a query it will take 8 hours 4 hours 6 hours sometime even takes couple of days like if you really run a complex sql query which you will not be able to like really uh, make any insight in real time right so that is when the big data comes into the picture so the roadmap and pipeline how a typical big data uh, a pipeline looks like i don't know like how much time i have left uh, um, i think i have just three minutes left uh, probably uh, yes, yes sorry yeah let's uh, let's ramp up and uh, maybe leave the room for for the questions please uh, all right Emma. okay so i will unmute uh, the microphones so people can um uh -huh. um, talk. All right. One second. Uh -huh. Yeah, so now your microphones are enabled. So if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and um, ask your question. Or if you don't have any questions at the moment, you can always uh, reach out to me or to Keshav. Um, yeah, I will type my email uh, in the chat box. I think we have a couple. OK, oh, all right. Mm -hmm. So if we have nothing, then let me talk about this last slide, uh, probably just in brief. So like uh, how does a big data pipeline looks like? So if uh, the data source could be website, apps, real time device, machine, sensor, um, the the input from the uh, uh, LinkedIn or Facebook or Insta like all those uh, all those sites uh, and uh, so so like if if those are the data source we receive or like in like if you talk about the Unicredit then probably like if it is a trade processing so in real time like if it is uh, all the all the uh, all the uh, all the uh, transaction that is happening. So if it is coming and we want to drive the analytics on the real time, so those are the those are the data that will come to us, or uh, we can also take the in the, uh, data from the database like MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, SQL Server, whatever uh, we 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 take these inputs. So then I talked uh, to you about the data ingestion. So like these are the file system that we will receive through the. Uh, uh, on some server or something but like then we have to take that to the uh, distributed file system which is the hadoop so a scoop will help us to take the insight from the database right like as i told you explained you so so hadoop like if we are using the hadoop uh, then the the tool we are going to use is called scoop if we have the same file system hosted on uh, same thing hosted on the amazon then the things we use is called glue and if it is azure then there is a uh, thing called data factory so we use the data factory to take the uh, data so ingestion of data is like taking the data from the database or the other sources into the distributed file system so s3 is also a distributed file system only like if you are familiar with the uh, 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 cloud then S3 or Gen2, it is the distributed file system like in Hadoop cluster like Cloudera or uh, uh, if you have used then there like we have HDFS. So Amazon uh, giving us the S3, it is also a distributed file system and Azure, we use the Gen2. Then for the processing, as I told you about the MapReduce, Hive and Spark like so these are the three things we we mostly use to process now map reduce is like very uh, getting very limited we really don't have uh, uh, like latest job we write in spark and hive only map reduce i myself did not write much uh, uh, code on, on this athena and redshift uh, is uh, uh, again like so uh, if you 
uh, if you have the big data system hosted on the AWS, then this is uh, the, the 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 offering the Amazon called is uh, Amazon EMR, uh, which is Elastic Map Reduce, and there the processing is called Athena or Redshift. So so Amazon has given the name Athena and Redshift, but basically it is uh, just like Hadoop has given the name like Spark Hive. So Amazon, like if you're running, so it is their service offering offerings are Athena and Redshift and like that Azure call it Synapse Analytics. So, so that is there. And then uh, after processing, uh, mostly we store the data in NoSQL like MongoDB or something or HBase. So, or DynamoDB. So like here, HBase is uh, supported by the Hadoop. My uh, Amazon provide the same uh, NoSQL uh, database storage that is called DynamoDB and Azure is called uh, Cosmos DB. So basically why we store after processing the data after running some analytics, uh, why we store in NoSQL? Because after that, the data visualization takes place like the BI or Tableau. So those those things come into and there is a, they, 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 there are team like they are called BI developer or Tableau developer. What they do like uh, my job as a big data developer is just to process the data and then store it in the NoSQL. Uh, if it is like not stored in the NoSQL, then probably it will be very difficult for them to, you know, uh, take the insight from here, like take the input from the NoSQL and then uh, uh, then present that data in the uh, in the visual, visual form, like it will be some some pie chart, some 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 graph or some some dashboard. And basically, like in many cases, uh, uh, the the idea of the big data is to uh, to do the fraud direction or like in real time. So generally, these reports also also go to the higher management. It many times it goes to the CEO level and all. And based on that, they 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 see like how the business is going and uh, which direction and what decision they have to take. So so that is why like no SQL storage is like very important. And many times we store the data in no SQL from where it is being picked up by the BI and Tableau developer to to drive the insight uh, from from it. So I think uh, I have tried to cover it's a very long topic and each technology itself is a very big thing. But I still I try to cover whatever I could. Thank you so much.